small audience. <laughs> Welcome here. My name is Jeff Foppes. I'm a lecturer at Hans University of Applied Sciences in Groningen, the Netherlands. Uh, and about my presentation, I can give you a plain and simple version of the more detailed, or the more detailed, complex one. Uh, when I made my presentation, I, uh, I didn't know in what time slot I was, so at this late hour I won't make it too difficult. <laughs> uh, I'll try to make it easy. Um, so I start with a, a, an ultimately simplified version, which is told in a couple of minutes. After a while, afterwards, I will dive into details, maybe. And you just might pick up whatever you find interesting and comprehensible enough. My story is about evaluation research on health gains. In the Netherlands, where I come from, the clinical and medical use of game based intervention is rapidly growing. And with that, the demands that their effects are tested adequately. Are these alternative interventions any good? Um, conventional health game uh, research, mostly what you see here on the left, mostly examines the difference be uh, between traditional interventions and the alternatives. In this case, health games. But mostly the games are somewhat treated as black boxes. That is to say that the target effects are measured in experimental trials. But most of the time, no relation is laid, laid out between goals and target effects and game mechanics and persuasive principles and theories on the other hand, which is a pity, I think. Uh, and that's where we come in, because we, and that's uh, my colleagues of our professorship, user experience and myself, think there is a lot to win and to learn and to improve here. Uh, we think we have some expertise in game design, in cognitive information processing, persuasive uh, and educational principles, and, and in narrative persuasion and procedural rhetorics, amongst others. So we try to set up a research model which we, uh, with which we can map behavioral effects of these interventions to gameplay and game mechanics. With this model, we try to find out which particular gameplay aspects and game mechanics, like rules, challenges, rewards, narrative, aesthetics, etc., are responsible for certain behavioral effects. And because we think there are different types of target effects, and we distinguish the short-term effects, uh, like motivation to exercise, just for the time being, or for the play session, and long-term effects, uh, behavior, attitude change, for example, uh, that has to settle in on the long run as well, like quitting unhealthy behavior or starting more healthy behavior. That's why our model is based on the elaboration likelihood model of persuasion. I'll explain more about that later. Um, which states that persuasion happens via two cognitive processing routes. The central route, and that requires a lot of attention, cognitive attention, um, a lot of reasoning and reflection on the persuasive issues uh, and the peripheral route and that requires much less attention uh, and superficial and emotional processing more. So our model is based on the assumption that games which strive to attain long-term effects must invite a player to take the central route one way or another. And my paper tries to explain in a very modest way how to evaluate a game on this manner. Uh, and in this case, as I will show you later, we do it, do it with the use of an expert review using heuristics and a play test afterwards. Well, that's the simple story. My paper and the more complex presentation is about explaining how this model works. So you got to see this model uh, later on. And it does so with a case study of remission. It's already been told, uh, been mentioned before by other ones here. Um, uh, and let me start with uh, the other side around. Yeah. Um, remission uh, is a game uh, that is uh, intended for optimizing patient behavior. Uh, for uh, 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 young adults uh, 
have cancer and who are not uh, uh, very faithful in taking the medicine, for example. And there are a lot of, uh, of some other target effects as well, target, target your goals as well, as well, as I must say. Um, and uh, why I took this game, especially as a case study, is that it's already extensively tested by means of experimental validation by Kato and others. Uh, they found out that uh, playing remission uh, significantly improved treatment adherence. So uh, the patients, the cancer patients, were uh, taking their medicine more faithfully. Uh, the self efficacy and knowledge about cancer was all, 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 uh, all also improved, and about the cancer treatment. Uh, but it did not affect self report measures of adherence, stress, uh, perceived control, control over health, or quality of life at all. So we wondered how can that be? What uh, does the game missing? What is, what is not particularly right about the game that these effects, these goals, these targeted goals uh, are not attained? Uh, so that, that were, that's where our idea, our model, our research framework comes in. We want to assess how behavioral effects can be attributed to particular game mechanics and gameplay aspects. Like I said, it's founded on the elaboration likelihood model of persuasion, and that uh, that model of persuasion has two parts: long-term long and, and short-term short attitude and behavior change. Um, now, for example, uh, exit games uh, you don't have to attain long-term effects, of course, because you just want to motivate patients uh, during. Uh, gameplay to uh, motivate them to, to, to do the exercise at the moment. So they don't, you don't need a, a, a behavior or attitude, attitude change on the long term, on the long run. Uh, this model, the evolution likelihood model, is based on two assumptions. People want to have correct beliefs, and people do not have the motivation or ability to carefully assess it. Mostly they, you, you just take shortcuts uh, if there are uh, some persuasive message in the media, somebody wants to sell you something or sell something. Uh, the central route, uh, and that's uh, for the long term effects, for uh, long term behavioral, behavioral change. Uh, there, People have to logically and cons consciously scrutinize the arguments. Uh, they, they have to reason about what they see. Uh, and it requires uh, a lot of motivation and the ability to think carefully about the issues involved. So, shortly, it's rationality and reflection where it's all about. Uh, and the peripheral route, well, it's more. Uh, Emotional, aesthetic, superficial. Uh, people use a rule of thumb or educated guess, uh, surface level cues. Uh, and the effects are most, mostly very short. Uh, uh, you see, for example, uh, a, do a doctor or a dentist, and uh, it's a nice person, and you think, well, it's a doctor, it will be okay. So you don't think about the quality of the, 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 the products they, they, uh, they promote. So what do we do in our model? We're trying to do, we're just starting, and we have to validate our research model as well. Um, examine how certain game mechanics cause specific behavioral effects. And in this case, in, uh, we did a case study, or I did a small case study, of just a part of uh, remission, uh, what caused the less successful uh, results? And how could we improve that? So, they stated in uh, the research report of Cato uh, 
did not affect self-report measures of deterrence, stress, perceived control over health, quality of life. Well, those are evidently long-term effects. So, what we uh, what we do? Did was a, a, a sort of a expert evaluation to find out if uh, anything in the game uh, forces or invites players to take the central route to have a long-term uh, attitude, behavioral effect. Um, now, our model uh, consists of three matrices, I just showed them very shortly, in which uh, the principles I mentioned here, design gameplay principles, puzzles principles, behavioral principles are worked out. And what you see is on the left, there are all the principles of theories that can be used and implemented uh, to force players, to invite players to the central route. And on the right, you see all the principles and theories and uh, game mechanics or uh, gameplay entertainment principles uh, to force players to use the peripheral route. So, nothing over what is happening in the game. The same goes here for the persuasive principles. And what you see here is in red is uh, the example ideas for this paper. So I just took the per, uh, narrative persuasion. I did a, an expert, a short expert review of narrative persuasion on this game. And the same goes for behavior change theories. Of course, in a normal test, Evaluation, expert evaluation. Uh, you have to do uh, all these principles to work out all these principles. But that's definitely not enough time to do that. Um, so I thought of some heuristics to assess narrative persuasion. Uh, narrative transportation is one of them. Because uh, that guides their attention, players' attention to, to relevant issues in the game. Uh, or in the story, uh, uh, refers to cognitive, emotional, and imagery engagement in the story. We all know the term immersion. Uh, so, the story is a, a, a very good way to, to uh, let the player imagine that they are in another world. So, that's, that's one part, part of it. And uh, narrative transportation is more likely change attitudes and beliefs in the direction suggested by the story as well. So that's an important one, but it's not, uh, this one is not uh, uh, important uh, in the dis uh, distinction between long-term or short-term effects. It's just uh, a motivational aspect. So the first heuristic would be transporting, uh, how does the story of a mission aim at transporting the player into the game? Uh, narrative perspective, I uh, just quickly scan through this because my time is <laughs> already through my time. Uh, uh, the second heuristic would assess uh, how does remission story arouse identification because that actually influences identification and, and story consistency of attitudes. And the most effect, uh, important one in this case to assess whether uh, the game forces the player to take the central road uh, in order to attain long-term effects. Is this the most important one? Uh, does the story stimulate reflection? Uh, and there are some narrative devices uh, that, uh, that can do that. And for example, breaking the fourth wall. I've got an example here. Uh, my <laughs> This one is a, a picture from the game uh, Metal Gear uh, Solid. And uh, what's happening there, breaking the fourth wall, I don't know who's familiar with that term, breaking the fourth wall, yeah? What's happening there is that a, a character from the game is falling out of his role and addressing the player. So as a player you think, whoa, what's happening here? And you start to think over, you all also 
got, get to know that it's a construction. So this is a form of deconstruction of a game. The player knows it's a constructed thing. Constructed media. Okay. Um, so the third heuristic will be is remission story likely to stimulate a reflective mental state. Uh, um, I just did uh, uh, an expert review on the first heuristic and the conclusion of that was one was narrative is properly constructed to draw players in and against them in the story world. Uh, and uh, well, what I say in proper uh, expert review, the next heuristics will be assessed. In this case, particularly the third one, uh, what happens with these results? You make a list of assumptions and do a play test. That's what we normally should uh, would do. Our player players experience these narrative aspects, and these play tests, uh, the results of it, uh, we should do uh, we. Not what we do normally do is do a playtest and uh, uh, use, uh, for example, a game experience questionnaire or uh, 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 I can't, can't remember the word right now. Uh, and these results uh, should lead or could lead, at least that's our goal, uh, to some adjustments of specific narrative aspects to improve patients' perceived control over health and patients' self-report measures. And hopefully, and that's the most important, but more sustained and more long-lasting as well. So, on the basis of these uh, elaboration likely or well, it should be. So, that's it. Okay, now. Anybody ask question? Just let me take one question. What is the most difficult part of your playtest? The most difficult parts. Uh, uh, the most difficult part, I think, is finding the right uh, uh, playtesters. <laughs> I think that's the most most difficult. Yeah. No, no, we, we, we didn't we didn't we didn't take. I, I just did a case study of this, uh -huh. so we didn't take uh, do a play oh, test on this. It's just it's just an explanation of our research model. Uh -huh. So yes. how we uh, like to plan uh, research on other games because this game uh, doesn't. Can is used anymore because there's always already a follow up on this one, the uh, remission two. So it's just an example of how our research model works. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Or let's put your hand together.